Welcome back to our regular worship during this time of separation. We continue our weekly St. Paul's in your living room. Please note that each week you have an option. Either you can watch the entire Eucharistic service or an abbreviated lesson and sermon. Both are on YouTube. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had, you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not know him now, you believe in him and rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, 
nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let the Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And our refrain, the Lord will show me the path of life. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, Presiding Bishop Curry said in his Easter sermon, This is Easter Sunday. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't smell like it. It doesn't feel like it. But this is Easter Sunday. Our churches are empty. There are no flowers. On the first Easter Sunday, the disciples were barricaded behind locked doors. They were in lockdown. They really did not know it was Easter. It didn't look like Easter. It didn't feel like Easter. No flowers. For them, it was still Good Friday. The darkness that enveloped the cross held them in the darkness of fear. And we are there too, confined to our homes. 
It seems that we are in the midst of the painful hours of Good Friday rather than in the joy of Easter. Clearly, some resurrections do not take place in three days. On that first Easter day, Jesus passed through locked doors where the disciples were huddled in fear. The first words of Jesus to them were these, peace be with you. Very apt, appropriate, and timely. Then Jesus does something rather strange. Then Jesus showed them his wounds. It was Jesus all right, but is that all there was to it? He was alive. What does that really mean? Well, yes, the disciples were ecstatic, very happy to see Jesus alive. And Jesus said to them a second time, peace be with you. Thomas was not with the disciples on that first Easter Sunday when Jesus appeared. The disciples joyfully told Thomas that they had seen the Lord. Thomas was not moved by their exuberance. He simply did not believe what the other disciples told him. All of other Jesus' followers had to see Jesus first before they believed. Mary Magdalene, the disciples, saw Jesus first, then believed. So why are we so hard on Thomas for demanding the same opportunity, opportunity to see Jesus first and then believe? Is seeing believing? Or is believing seeing? We shall see. One week later, the following Sunday, Jesus appeared again before his disciples. Big changes had occurred in their demeanor. Fear was gone. Fear is not mentioned at all. Jesus' words, do not be afraid, penetrate deep into their hearts and minds and souls. They had the mind of the risen Christ. The disciples were not afraid. And this is a strong invitation for us to look into the future without fear. Thomas was present and he was confronted gently by Jesus. Jesus said to Thomas, and this is the literal translation, do not be without faith, just believe. Well, what did Jesus do? Well, he showed Thomas his wounds. This is the second time that Jesus called attention to his wounds. And at that moment, Thomas cried out, my Lord and my God. Through these wounds, Thomas saw into the heart of God. The resurrection did not remove the wounds. God is revealed as a suffering God. When in heaven I meet Jesus and see his wound marks, I will weep with joy, my Lord and my God. I remember these words from the spiritual hymn, when I survey the wondrous cross. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever love, did ever such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose a rich crop? Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Isaiah just said that the servant of God was wounded for our sake. The grieving God is our companion. 
today and tomorrow. He rules over the world with nail-marked loving hands. Precisely in these Good Fridays that we are experienced in a negative way, the coronavirus runs rampant as we seek treatment, treatment and vaccine. We turn to our Lord and God. Emmanuel, God with us. God's suffering, love, and compassion are with us. God's love conquers all. For many, the coronavirus is crushingly devastating. Well over 17 million people are unemployed. Small and large businesses are suffering. Checks have been held up by an overwhelmed government bureaucracy. We experience separation, face masks, a long, long Good Friday. But this is the season of Easter. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. But this is the season of Easter. The arrival, what looks like Easter and feels like Easter, may take more than three days. But it is Easter. Love has not died. Jesus is alive with us. I remember how much people were upset and uncertain about their future after the financial crash on Black Monday back in the late 80s. It was in these stressful circumstances that one of our elderly members told about all the pain and stress that she had gone through over the years. She lost a son. Her husband died. She battled with cancer. Her faith in God carried her through all. With her long walk with God, she was able to assure us of God's faithfulness and love. This was a sobering message for our congregation. She believed and was able to see God present. I recently heard a priest who spoke about his pain in serving his people in the midst of the coronavirus. He shared that an older couple in his parish became infected with the virus and became very ill. They were hospitalized and rapidly declined in the same hospital. But as it is with this disease, they were isolated from one another and from the family they loved. They died alone. A very short time between the deaths of each. The family was devastated at losing both parents. Because of the restrictions of distancing, they were permitted only to have at graveside only to have a graveside service and a strict rule of a maximum of 10 people. Thanks be to God, the priest thought. Thanks be to God, to God. The priest was relieved to find that there were five children and five spouses. So he did not have to tell any of the immediate family that they could not attend their parents' funeral. At the, at the service, he asked each of them to share something about his parents. And he heard story after story about love and care they received from mom and dad. And the love that they had shared and given to mom and dad. It struck this priest in a, found, a profound way that even though the parents were dead, love was not. He shared with a reporter that he was able to see the living Christ there. 
and profoundly impacted by the realization that love never dies. He usually sprinkled holy water at the funerals, but was not permitted because of restrictions against sprinkling water. At the end of the graveside, at the end of this service, a light rain began to fall. His eyes saw, his eyes of faith saw that our living Lord had provided holy water. The rain was a sign of our weeping God. As Jesus wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus, so now God weeps at the death of any and all of his dear children. And the pain that we feel at this time, God is mindful of. This hurting world needs the power of our compassionate, grieving, powerful God. As heirs of the resurrection, we are to mount the ramparts in vigilant prayer. Put on the whole armor of God and deliver compassion and love for this hurting world, our hurting country. Love is resurrection. Love is life-giving. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ pours forth both the love of God and the love of his church upon our dear world. Love means everything. Nothing shall ever separate us from the love of God. The coronavirus is not our future. It will be overcome by our powerful, loving God. Love conquers all. Love says all will be well. All will be well. Faith in God's love is our assurance. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The prayers of the people. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the coronavirus that has claimed the lives of many and has, has affected many more. We pray for our President Donald Trump that you would give him wisdom in guiding our nation. We pray for the Corona Task Force that they may stem the tide and spread of this disease and arrive at vaccines and protection for our people. We pray for those who are afflicted that they may soon be restored to health. And we pray for those who have died alone that they would be comforted by the power of the resurrection and your loving presence. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to keep those in need of help in prayer. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. We pray for our diocese. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our Bishop John, the clergy, and all of our people. By your Spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your Son, and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among us who live in the time of this pandemic, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray for St. Paul's. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear the prayers for this parish family. Strengthen us that we may be one flock, care for one another, keep us in prayer for your saving help. Grant us all things necessary for our common good, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you to spiritual communion, reflecting on the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in this blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive your, you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. You have always been in my heart since the day of my baptism. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us join in the after communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living, living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.